Welcome to this lightning talk on a crash course in energy systems modeling and analysis in Julia. My name is Deepak Krishnamurthy, and I'm speaking on behalf of a number of researchers at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. At NREL, we have developed a suite of infrastructure modeling capabilities to understand emerging energy systems operations and planning challenges. And in this talk, we'll walk through what a typical energy modeling analysis may look like in the power systems domain. In the process of this talk, we'll provide an overview of some Julia packages and their associated capabilities. Specifically, we're going to talk about these packages. Power Systems.jl, which allows a researcher to consume data according to a Power Systems data specification. Power Simulations.jl and Power Models.jl, which are used for production cost modeling and quasi-static system simulation. And finally, Power Graphics.jl, which helps in the visualization and analysis of results from a power simulation. I've already preloaded these packages and run the code that we're going to see ahead of time, so we won't see any pre-compilation delays while we're walking through this illustrative example. Let me load these packages again in the REPL over here. Typically for an analysis, as a researcher, the first thing you're doing is dealing with some data. And you may already have power systems data in an industry standard format. For example, MatPower is one of the most popular data formats for test systems in the power system domain. Power systems or JL supports parsers for MatPower as well as a few other standard power system data formats. For today's analysis, we're going to build a system from a CSV formatted data set called the RTS JMLC. This data set is an open source data set. You can find the link to this data set over here. The RTS JMLC is published as a list of CSV files uh, that, that contain information about the power system, namely information about the buses, the branches, the generators, etc. Additionally, there is also some metadata that we have added to this repository that helps it easier that makes it easier to consume this into power systems or JL. This metadata maps the column names in the CSV to the fields in the various structs that are part of the data specification in power systems or JL. Okay, in order to load the data into Julia data structures, we can use some pre-built data, pa uh, data passing capability in power systems or JL. So I'm gonna just run that code over here. Now you'll notice that we have the system object that contains all the information we need to perf perform a power systems analysis. You'll also notice there are 157 generators in this data set. Okay. Now that we have the data set in a predefined format and in Julia data structures, we can go ahead and do a power systems analysis. Power simulations.jl is designed to flexibly build and execute sequential optimization problems. And this can help do a wide range of uh, analysis, uh, all listed here. But today we're gonna focus just on unit commitment. Let's say we wanted to perform a day ahead market clearing simulation with unit commitment. In order to solve a unit commitment problem, we first need to define what a unit commitment means. A unit commitment problem is an optimization problem that decides which generator should be turned on or off subject to some system and operating constraints. Power Simulations has built-in templates for standard formulations of these operations problems. For example, we can instantiate a template for a unit commitment problem like shown here. This specifies what rules should be used when building a model that is to be solved. In this case, it will instantiate a template that allows us to use all the constraints required for a unit commitment problem. Here we have defined that the network model be based on the DC power flow model assumptions. This formulation comes from an integration with powermodels.jl. Power models also has a bunch of other formulations. You can check out the powermodels.jl uh, repository for more information. Now that we've defined the problem that we'd like to solve, we can instantiate a solver to, to solve it. For this example, let's use express.jl. 
Here I've set the MIP gap to 0 0.05. And finally, we can build and execute a simulation. In order to build and execute a simulation, we first need to do two things. We need to build a stage and we need to build a simulation sequence. So I'm gonna run some code here and then I'll explain what it does. Okay. In order to build a stage, we need a system, a template, and a solver. This is what we created in the previous steps. With, with this instance of a system, template, and solver, we can create a unit commitment stage. A user can, uh, can use various different stages in powersimulations.jl. For example, to model unit commitment, economic dispatch, and AGC, you can model all of them as different stages. In this simulation, we've, we've created a case with just one stage, which is the unit commitment, and we have defined three steps in this stage. Uh, each step is one day. And in order to make sure that the stages that we've defined execute in the desired order, we need to define a simulation sequence. Uh, the, the stage problem length, the look ahead, and other details surrounding the temporal sequencing of stages are controlled by these arguments. There's more information about this in our documentation. This simulation sequence is for a typical day ahead unit commitment uh, simulation sequence. You'll see various calls to express to solve this problem. And for three days, it's solved it. You'll also see timing information that is printed out for, for each stage and step. Okay, so finally, for the analysis of the results, we can load powergraphics.jl to visualize the data. Let's make this a little easier to see. Once we're done with we've once we're done with the simulation, first we store the results in a, the simulation results variable. PowerSystems.jl natively populates simulation results uh, as a struct of data frames. And Power, PowerGraphics.jl has some standard plotting capabilities. And these plotting uh, is also quite interactive, so you can really explore the data set. Well, that was a whirlwind tour of, of energy systems modeling and analysis with Julia. All the packages mentioned in this talk are open source. Check out these links for more information. And feel free to reach out to our team if you have any questions.